Hey, what's going on there, everybody? Cloud and Truth here. Welcome to a complete in-depth guide for the support gadgets here in Battlefield 4. As you can see from the screen, I've unlocked all these bad boys for the support class, and what I'm going to be doing is taking you all in-depth with each and every one of these gadgets and explaining exactly how they function here in Battlefield 4. That way, once you unlock them, you won't be at a complete loss in trying to figure it out for yourself while on the battlefield. If you're here for just one or two specific gadgets, be sure to check the description as I have the times in the video in which I talk about them listed out. So if you're here for, for instance, maybe the Mortar or the MPAPS, check the description. There will be a time listed there. That way you can skip ahead to that point in the video if you just came to figure out a little bit of information. Now let's go ahead and get started here with this uh, guide. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is something that seems rather self-explanatory, but I'm going to cover it. That way I uh, am here to basically cover everything and I don't want to leave any gadget untouched because you never know when somebody perhaps would have had a helpful tip that uh, may seem common sense to a lot of people. Starting off with the most identifiable and really recognizable gadget of the support class, the ammo box. Now the ammo box is not what you actually start off with like you did in Battlefield 3. But it works basically the same. You can see it's the same physical feature, just the big ammo box that you toss out. Resupplies every kind of bullets, explosive, grenade to yourself and your teammates. And it works, like I said, just the same as it did in BF3. However, the ammo pack is actually what you start off with when playing support. And it works differently than what it did, or rather, it works differently, I should say, than the ammo box. And it was not in Battlefield 3. And basically what the ammo pack is kind of like a mini version of the ammo box. You can toss it out, you can have two of them out at a time, and what they do is they seem to refill your bullets, just a couple of clips and or magazines, and that's it. They don't actually refill your entire gun in terms of every single drop of ammo that you lose. They won't continuously refill you. If you obviously go back to stand on them, they will, but you it doesn't basically, you can't sit there if you're completely out of ammo and restock your entire arsenal of explosives of ammo it just refills those bullets and usually about two to three clips before it is exhausted of its use so it's not exactly the greatest tool in the world for support to give out ammo but it's what you have starting off with and just continuously play support and you'll get to the ammo box which i now run all the time and personally i find to be much better up next we have the m18 claymore a returning gadget from battlefield 3 but it works very differently here in battlefield 4 and when I say differently, it still has obviously the same functionalities and it serves the same purpose. However, it's done so in my personal opinion a little bit better manner here in BF4 than it was in BF3. You guys remember in Battlefield 3, the Claymores were very hard to see because oftentimes they would just kind of blend in with the ground due to their color. But in Battlefield 4, one of the ways that DICE has made Claymores a little bit more recognizable is whenever you place them down, they have the trip wires that now extend out and kind of lock itself into its environment surrounding it. So that way you're able to see these claymores that are being placed on the ground. They have these trip wires, much like the PDMs from Medal of Honor Warfighter. So you're able to detect where these things are because you can physically see the wires, making them a little bit easier to see here in Battlefield 4. But ultimately though, they still serve the same purpose as they always have, being kind of in some ways a nuisance and annoyance for staircases, but they definitely do work very effectively. Now the next set of gadgets I'm going to be covering is the XM gadgets here in Battlefield 4. But one thing I'd like to say before getting into them is that you can only carry one XM gadget in your arsenal at a time. There's three different ones here in Battlefield 4, but you can only carry one at a time. So don't try to carry the XM25 Airburst and the XM25 Smoke. You cannot do that. I know it seems like common sense, but I just want to let you all know that if you're going through the support class and unlocking things, don't hope, you know, think, oh, I can carry two of them at once. You cannot. You can only carry one XM gadget at a time. So without further ado, let's get into the XM gadgets here in Battlefield 4. Now moving on to the XM25 Airburst, I'm going to pause the video right here. That way we can take a look at how this, how this gadget looks like when you zoom in. Now obviously for those of you that didn't know, have never used this or seen any gameplay of it, it is the infrared scope that you have on this gadget. So it's you see this green haze, that's just the infrared, you can't change it. That's always what the scope will be for this gadget, at least of right now. But what's really important here is the three words that you see on the screen and the numbers next to them. On the right, you have something that says RNG. That stands for range. That's your distance in meters away to your nearest target. And that will change as you move around. Basically, whenever that little, those crosshairs, whatever target is closest to it, whatever it's distance away, that's what it's going to measure. You move to like, I don't know, a tree that's way out in the distance and you're not, there's not anything impeding. It will give you that range out to there. But what's really important here for understanding the XM25 Airburst is what's on the left side. On the top and the left, you have something that says OFST or offset, it's set at three. 
That will always be the case because the XM25 airburst round explodes three meters past where its uh, target is. So that will always be set at three, but what's really important for understanding this whole entire weapon is combining the offset with the air burst, which is what that stands for right below it. That is gonna be what's really significant here. The air burst is the distance in which it's actually going to explode at that point. But one thing to note here is that whenever you zoom in with this, this gadget, it locks into the target distance. It gives you the range and it gives you the airburst and the offset and it stays at that. Your range, if though, if you start to move, your range will change. However, your airburst stays the same. It does not change. So whenever you are zooming in, okay, I have a target. Wait, there's a guy over here to the left. Perhaps he's another 50 meters beyond. Your airburst is not gonna adjust. You have to actually zoom out and then zoom back in so it recalculates the distance correctly and it locks that target and now has the right distance so you can fire and actually hit him. Otherwise, it will stay at the previous airburst range and not even come close to hitting him. So that's what's really important about this is understanding the airburst distance in combination with the range and the offset. That's how you use this gadget in Battlefield 4. You have to zoom in and zoom out every time you basically acquire a new target at longer ranges. The next XM gadget we have is the XM25 Smoke Launcher. Now this gadget works identically to the XM25 Airburst, except instead of firing explosive airburst rounds, it fires smoke rounds instead. You still have to use the same exact format, what I explained earlier about the airburst to line up your shots in order to be able to get them to land where you wish. And the same thing goes in terms of actually having to lock a target in order to get that adjusted right and hit firing as well, it just doesn't have a range. You just hit fire, it makes explosions basically on contact, except in this case, obviously, it fires smoke rounds. In terms of the smoke lengths and how long it stays up after you fire, it appears to be around five seconds or so. Not that long. So what really the strength of this weapon can be used for is in its spam ability. You can fire five if you have a one of those cells chambered in, a five basically rounds of smoke balls out, and you can use that as cover if you wish to cross some kind of street area or if you wish to create a distraction, something like that. So it does have a role here in Battlefield 4 as a means of smoke cover if you're playing the support class. Also, the XM25 smoke launcher can kill if you get a direct impact hit, which I'll show you all here as I hit this guy right in the back when playing some rush here on Dawnbreaker. So it can kill with direct impact. So if you see an enemy, aim for him. It will kill him. You don't have to worry about being completely defenseless if you're accurate and you're a good shot. You can kill people with this and probably pick them off at relatively longer ranges. So that's the same. That's basically, it's the same thing as the airburst, except it is a smoke launcher rather than an explosive airburst shell that it fires out. The final XM gadget here we have in Battlefield 4 is the XM25 Dart. Unlike its other XM gadgets in the smoke and airburst launcher, it does not fire an explosive round as its name would indicate. Very similar to the M26 type of shotgun dart, the XM25 Dart is basically a shotgun. It fires pellets rather than explosive or smoke rounds, making this weapon a very, very effective close quarters presence that can definitely take down some enemies. But with this XM gadget in terms of using it as a shotgun, it seems to be, for me, relatively inconsistent. However, that is probably due to the fact that I've found that the XM25 dart is most effective within 20 meters and under, but preferably about 15. Once you go further than 20 meters, I find that this weapon just doesn't seem to hold its own very well. Now, obviously, that's getting pretty far in terms of shotgun range, but in terms of its practical usage, don't pull this weapon out until you're pretty close quarters because the spread seems to get really erratic when you get past that 20 meters and beyond. Sometimes you can kind of get lucky and the majority of the pellets will stay grouped together, but it seems that once you get past 20 meters, that the spread just becomes too high. Stick to more closer quarters with the XM25 Dart, and it will definitely serve you well. But I still seem to find that unless the enemy is damaged or you manage to get all your pellets landed on him as you are basically right next to him, you'll have to follow up with a second shot after the first in order to be able to take him down. Now moving on to one of the most confusing gadgets for the support class here in Battlefield 4, the Man Portable Active Protection System, or the MPAPS for short. Of all the gadgets here in Battlefield 4, the MPAPS is by far the number one gadget that people seem to be the most confused about. They can read the description in game and see from what it says that obviously this gadget is some kind of protection and kind of like shield system, but they're not exactly sure how it works. Well, as you can see from reading the text in game, it is kind of like a shield that deflects explosives. But one important thing to note is that it does not block hand grenades. 
because people were reading this going, oh, I can just set this up in Operation Locker, and therefore I will never have any problems with hand grenades. That is not the case. We tested this thing out, thanks to my buddy Iceman, and whenever I was standing next to the MPAPS, he threw a hand grenade and I, kill I got killed, it just went straight through it and killed me. So it does not block hand grenades. But one thing it does block, as it says, is the rockets and other high explosives. Now, I'm going to show you all exactly how it deflects it and what it does. Basically, when you set up the MPAPS, you can kind of deploy it very similar to the remote mortar. You just deploy the MPAPS and then kind of just walk away, go do your own thing, and it will still serve and uh, its functionality, and basically it will still work. You do not have to be in it, although you can, much like the mortar, you can get in it just by pressing your right mouse button. You'll be able to get in it no problem. But unlike the mortar, you, you don't have to be in it for it to work. Basically, the MPAPS sets up a kind of like this perimeter that you surrounds it, and what it does is it kind of deflects, but not in a way of like ricocheting. It absorbs high explosives such as uh, rockets, the MBT Law, grenade launchers, etc. What it does is it kind of just sucks everything into it. And another important thing to note is that if you are standing within the vicinity, at least behind it, as I was, if someone shoots a rocket at you. It will absorb the rocket and completely take the damage and you will receive not 1% of health as damage as a result from the explosion. It does not hurt you if you are standing within the vicinity. However, that has not been confirmed for other areas surrounding it. That was when I was standing right behind it and it absorbed the rocket and blew up. I did not take a single point of damage. One other thing to note here is that it also does deflect or rather absorb grenade launcher shots, the M320. But one thing to note with the MPAPS and the M320 is that upon firing rockets, generally it will explode after one hit. Sometimes it will take two, but oftentimes it is one shot with a rocket. It kind of absorbs the hit and explodes and it basically gets destroyed. But with grenade launchers, it has a new kind of interesting feature that I did not see whenever firing at it with rockets. And that is the fact that it actually has this kind of multiple stages of use. After one M320 is fired at it, it will kind of begin to flash, and that just kind of lets you know that it seems to be, it's about to go offline. As long as the surrounding panel of lights on it are green, the ones that it casts on the ground and the ones that are emitting from the device, it is good to go and it will deflect incoming explosives. If that ever turns red, it will not block explosives such as grenade launchers or rockets that come flying your way. So be warned, if you see the panels and lights begin to flash green, that means that it is about to basically go system offline and will not protect you from incoming explosives. So if you can, someone were to continuously fire grenade launchers at you, one after the other after the other, eventually as the system goes down and it needs to recharge back up, the one of those grenades will get through to you if fired when the panels and lights are blinking red. But once it returns back online, you will be protected. So that's kind of how this thing works. It will block explosives such as uh, high artillery shells, rockets, and even grenade launchers, but will not deflect hand grenades. And what it does is basically it absorbs it and sucks it in and basically takes the blast for you and doesn't hurt anything around. At least that's as far as I've seen. So it's a very effective tool when used correctly, but kind of tricky to get right. But that's what the MPAPS does here in Battlefield 4, very much like a shield kind of protection system. One of the final gadgets we have here in Battlefield 4 for the support class is the Mortar. The Mortar is back from Battlefield 3, but it's been changed up quite a bit. No longer is it a stationary gadget where you have to be sitting on the Mortar and can continuously rain fire down upon your enemies, but you're stuck right there and cannot move from that position. Here in Battlefield 4, the Mortar is done, or rather, its usage is done by remote. You can set up your mortar and then perhaps go to a safer location and then use your remote to get in the mortar and use it or be on the front lines on the battlefield unlike Zavod Conquest and realize there's a bunch of snipers that are sitting on top of the uh, main buildings on the roof that they do like to do quite a lot and you can pull out your mortar perhaps that's all the way back maybe at your own A flag and begin to rain fire down upon them. That is one of the good things I like about the mortar here in Battlefield 4. Some people were questioning whether or not it's going to be too powerful. But here's why, and let me explain exactly how it works. The mortar in Battlefield 4 starts off with five rounds without any additive squad uh, perks, upgrade specializations. Basically, you have five shots you start off with, and it is a continuous fire about what, every second or two seconds you can launch a new shell out. But one of the things that makes the mortar more balanced and it's not makes it broken overpowered is the fact that it's recharge time for each shell that you wish to launch again is a very long time. It's like at least 10 seconds or so for each shell. So you start out with five, you can drop all five at once, but you're gonna have to wait a really 
long time before you can continuously drop fire. And if you guys remember in Battlefield 3, it was every six seconds, if I recall correctly, you could launch a new mortar shell out from your stationary mortar. So in the reality of it is, or rather the reality is the fact that if you wish to launch all five shells out, it's a longer period of time before you can consecutively launch the shells again, making it slower than it was in Battlefield 3. Now in terms of using this mortar, it's very important to note that you do not want to continuously fire upon a group of enemies. What you want to do is rather fire once and let the crosshairs that expand upon firing come back together. That way you get a follow-up accurate shot. With the mortar here in Battlefield 4, if you continuously begin to drop fire, basically the reticule on your screen or on the pad expands out and your shot becomes less accurate as you consecutively begin to fire. What you have to do is wait for it to, the crosshairs to come back together, then fire again. That's how you get much more accurate shots with the mortar here in Battlefield 4. And last but certainly not least, we have C4 as the final gadget you unlock for the support class here in Battlefield 4. Now most of you all don't need an in-depth guide of how C4 works. It's pretty self-explanatory in and of itself, and if you've ever played an FPS game, it's probably had C4 in it. Obviously, it's just an explosive device that you can put out and with it has a trigger to detonate. You can explode, killing infantry, vehicles, blowing up walls, etc. But here in Battlefield 4, you can finally throw it a little bit like you could in Battlefield Bad Company 2. It's not quite as far, but if you are moving forward and jump to go along with that, but if you still are just moving forward alone, you will be able to actually toss your C4 a reasonable distance. That way you can get it to stick onto vehicles so you don't have to be right up next to them like you were in Battlefield 3 as your soldier had the weakest forearms of any human being in, on Earth and he couldn't chuck C4 more than about 3 inches. Okay, I know it was farther, but that's what it seemed like. So that's going to wrap it up for this support guide in terms of the gadgets here in Battlefield 4. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please do leave a rating. A whole lot of work went into this to get you all this guide and in-depth explanation. I'd like to thank my buddy Iceman who helped me with the AP MP APS demonstration. And if you really enjoyed this and thought this was a great guide, be sure to share it over social media. Share it with your friends. Let them know about it. It would really, really help me out. And I do appreciate your all support so much. And also, if I did miss something that is extremely important, please, please, please drop a comment down below. I want people to know about these things. You all, if you find something out, drop it in the comment section. Let people know. Let's all learn and understand this class a little bit better. And you even could help me out. And I, if you, one of these tips you all leave may be something that I never would have known. And now because of it, it's perhaps one gadget is now a lot more usable or something like that. It'd be much appreciated. So once again, if you enjoyed this video, a rating is much appreciated. Take care, guys, and I will see you all next time.